Hello, and welcome to a new program here on METV, Guardian Ad Litem, We Speak for the Children. I'm Charles Clapsaddle, Station Manager for Manatee Educational Television, and it's great, my great pleasure to introduce to you a new program series that's beginning right now on METV about Guardian Ad Litem, a vital program to our community. Let me introduce our panelists. First of all, we have Tony Latorti, Tony, thank you so much for joining us. You are the director of the Guardian Ad Litem program for the 12th Judicial Circuit here in Manatee, County, Manatee, Sarasota, and DeSoto County? Yes. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and we appreciate you taking the time to be here. Thank you for having me. And next joining us is Nancy Sanders, the volunteer Guardian Ad Litem, but you're also the chair of the volunteer recruitment committee, which is a very vital program, a very vital committee for the Guardian Ad Litem program. Thank you for having us. I appreciate being here. Nancy, it's a pleasure to have you, and thank you for initiating this program. And last, but certainly not least, it's our great pleasure <coughs> to welcome back to METV Senior Judge Lee Hayworth. Judge Hayworth, it's a great pleasure to see you again, and I know how busy your schedule is, even in retirement, and but Having you here for this first program about the Guardian Ad Litem program is, is a great coup for these ladies because of your involvement for many, many years uh, with the program itself. Thank you for the invitation, Charles, and I can't wait to tell you all the good things this program does. Judge, it's great to see you, but I want to start with Tony. First of all, Tony, can you give us an overview of specifically what is the Guardian Ad Litem program and what does it provide? We are a court-appointed program that provides a voice for the children that have been sheltered from their families for abuse, um, neglect, or abandonment here in the um, 12th Circuit. So if a case comes before the circuit and there's a question about the safety of those children in, in, in any shape, form, or fashion, the Guardian Ad Litem program has, has a jurisdiction? We do have um, jurisdiction after the court um, finds probable cause to shelter the children, then the, our program is appointed. I see. So the, the 12th Judicial Circuit, Judge Hayworth, oversees the program for the Guardian Ad Litem, and then in any of the cases that Tony mentioned of abuse, abandonment, or neglect, uh, where children are taken from the home, the Guardian then uh, program comes into play. Well, that's true, except I wouldn't say the court really oversees the program. They have their own uh, bureaucratic structure through the state. They're a state agency. Right. They have their own um, executive director, Alan Abramowitz, uh, who is at the statewide head. And then uh, each circuit has got a program such as Tony's. Now, we're very fortunate here because her, her program has been fully staffed, and we have attorneys that work it. But to understand what they do, at the beginning of the case, the judge, when the child is removed, will appoint a guardian ad litem. The parents get lawyers, they have a case manager, they have tasks they have to perform on a case plan, they have 12 months to complete it. At the end of that, we look to the guardians to recommend whether or not the child should be reunified with the parent or go to continue in foster care or with a relative placement. So in effect then, and Nancy and, and Tony, please jump in on this, you really do become the voice for that child, and you are a representative for that child when matters come before the court. That's correct. And, and what does that entail? I mean, do you meet with the families? Do you meet with the child? Tell us a little bit about Nancy that. Answer. We meet with yeah. the children at least, <clears throat> excuse me, we meet with the children at least once a month. Uh, uh -huh. We also go and meet with their teachers. We meet with their daycare center workers. Hmm. We do that. We also might even, uh, at the invitation of the children, go to church with them one Sunday or to a ballet recital. Yeah. We go just about any place that is needed. We kind of step in so that we can see what the children are doing, make sure their needs are met, their emotional needs, as well as their social needs. 
And, and when there is a court date, uh, Judge Hayworth, is the guardian required to be there if the families have to appear in court? The families are usually there, and sometimes we have the children there, too. One of the uh, valuable contributions of the Guardian Ad Litem program is their reports that they make to the judge at regularly scheduled judicial reviews. So when a child is removed from the family, the court sets a variety of dates for the court to review the progress of the parents on the case plan and particularly to hear from the guardians about how well the parents are doing and most importantly, how are the kids doing. Uh. And I can tell you that is a valuable resource for the judges because they have independent views and opinions that are often very persuasive in whether a child goes back to a, a family or whether they continue in foster care or with a relative. Uh, it's very important work. Now, Tony, how long have you been doing this work and how did you get involved with the Guardian Ad Litem program? I've been with the program since September of 2006 oh. and I started as a, um, in, doing an internship for oh. the office in Manatee County. Um, and it, led me into a lot of uh, different roles. I was a staff advocate and a child advocate manager who supervises volunteers. Um, then I became the team leader for the Sarasota office in my uh, newest role here. Is that director. as director? Yes. You know, and, and it's got to be very rewarding work, I would think. And I want to talk to Nancy about that. But being able to stand up and have the best interest of that child when they have their families in court and it might be kind of turmoil going on. It's got to be very rewarding to have, to be a voice for that child, for that child's best interest. It is. It's very rewarding and I know um, that Nancy can speak to that. Um, most of our staff, uh, we have had personal cases ourselves where we are the actual volunteer guardian at Lightham on the case and so that we can see um, what the volunteers, you know, um, go through with the children um, and just how a case works from that side so it gives us a better understanding, not just, you know, being staff but also recognizing the role of what our volunteers do because it's, 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 it's a job sometimes mm -hmm. and um, that they volunteer to do it is, um, you know, great. And, and I think you, you hit the nail right on the head because this is, these are volunteer positions, uh, most of the gu guardian ad litem. And be able to do that, Nancy, you're in charge of volunteer recruitment. You know, what does it take to be a guardian ad litem? How do they learn <coughs> to be a guardian ad litem? And, and what are some of their responsibilities? Well, I know one of the things that we like to say is that you know, we're there to enrich the lives of the children. But also, I found that it's very enriching for the volunteers because once we get involved with the children, it's, it's very much, it's, it's not a grandparent role per mm -hmm. se, but you really do become attached to those children. I'm a sure. retired school teacher, and I know I used to refer to my students as my kids, <laughs> and now I've taken on that role with the children that I am I'm working with. And it's one of the questions on the monthly reports that we do or any time we visit with the children mm -hmm. is, is there anything you'd like to say to the judge? Hmm. And so on our report, we can actually quote the children and tell the, you know, tell the judge what the children are feeling, if they're getting something, if they're seeing their parents too much or not enough or, you know, whatever it is they want the court to hear. So the older children can really provide a lot of input that helps the court decide the future outcome of the individual cases. And, and I would imagine, and I'll throw this up to all three of you, that, you know, a, a child within the system, when they're going going through a case of abuse or abandonment or neglect or they've been taken from the home, you know, are, are feeling quite confused um, and, and afraid and alone. So having a guardian ad litem as that voice and that someone, you know, to help shepherd them through this is, is a great asset. Mm -hmm. The, um, when a child is removed from the home, I know they try to place the children with a family member because these are people that they already know. Right. If there are not family members available, then they look to the foster care system or group homes, and Tony would know this better than I would about how those placements are made. Tony, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, so besides family, we can also look for friends of the family, uh, which would be considered a non-relative placement, but if there's... Uh, not an available placement, whether it's with relative or non-relative, there is um, a placement um, specialist that's at the Safe Children Coalition oh. that then look into uh, their pool of foster homes or group homes, as Nancy stated, 
to find a placement. And it's always, they always try to keep the children in county. Right. Um, that's not always available. So they try to keep them as close to home as possible, but sometimes they do end up being placed out of county. And, and I can see how, why that's important because they probably have, you know, they're in school yes. or they're, you know, they have friends or you know, other family members mm -hmm. that are here. Now, Judge, you know, obviously you've been involved with the family law for many, many years and you've seen, you know, many children, unfortunately, having to be removed. How important is that guardian ad litem report that comes to you on a monthly basis? Quite frankly, it's the thing I read first. There's also a, um, a judicial re review report, which is probably about 20, 25 pages, hmm. out of which maybe 15 to 20 percent is really critical for what you need to know at that hearing. The guardians are very good about summarizing the, what's going on with that family, give us an insight in the dynamics of that family, and particularly how the children are reacting to being removed from their parents, mm -hmm. how they're doing in school. Uh, we'll have guardians say, you know, this child's due for a medical checkup on such and such a date. And then when I'm in court, I can ask the caretakers, have you made that appointment? Are you ready to go? Do you understand the child's medical issues? But for having that information, uh, I wouldn't be able to ask those questions. And maybe it would help to give some illustrations of how they really help uh, the judges in these cases and the children. Let me give two examples. In Sarasota County last year, and I, I don't have Manatee's figures, we had over 100 children born at Sarasota Memorial Hospital addicted to heroin and Oxycontins. And if you've ever seen a baby who is withdrawing from those horrible uh, drugs, it's a frightening experience and you worry about them. We appoint a guardian ad litem. He or she will follow that kid into perhaps a medical foster home and mm -hmm. let me know is the child having seizures? Is the child progressing? Uh, is, there, is the child thriving? And when I get those reports, we watch those very carefully, obviously, because they're so fragile. Mm. But the input we get from them is very helpful. When we have a case, as I had not too long ago, where a, um, a foster parent was trying to get insulin for a young child that was diabetic, called the caseworker multiple times, got no answer. Called the supervisor many times, got no answer. Mm. The guardian hears about that, hits the ceiling, calls me, we get a hearing, and the thing's resolved. The kid gets his insulin. The system wasn't working. We fixed that problem. But, but for the guardian coming forward and rave, you know, raising the red flag, uh, that child would have been in danger. And that's the sort of case and instance that uh, we're so helpful uh, for judges and why we appreciate their service. Well, the advocacy that the guardian ad litems continues to do is the kind of that front line, uh, because I, I would imagine too, and, and Judge, you, you, uh, I'm sure you, you're much more versed in this than I am, with the advent of this heroin epidemic and use of drugs and alcohol and things, I, I would imagine that even more children during this period of time are being removed from homes because of this heroin epidemic. Is that a correct assumption? I think a high percentage of the cases that are removed now, well typically the, the causes are mental illness, substance abuse, and physical or sexual abuse. Okay, mm. Those are the most common ones. And we've seen a, a, a surge in the number of kids being removed because the parents are basically addicted to drugs, which has accounted for a major surge in cases in Manatee County. Which leads to the next uh, uh, question, is that there, if, if there's more removals, you'll need more guardians uh, to be those advocates. So, and that's one of the things, uh, Nancy, that, that you have been working tirelessly at, is getting the word out for the need for guardians uh, for the system. Tell us yes. you know, some of the methods that you're doing Thank to you. get the word out. Well, one of the things is I tried to determine who our guardians were. <clears throat> Excuse me. And overwhelmingly, um, our guardians are retirees who have the time or they're individuals who may own their own business or have flexibility right. with their careers so they can leave the office, for example, to attend a court hearing or, or whatever they need to, you know, to attend. Um, and so what I did is I thought, well, who's reading newspapers and who's reading online and things like that? So I first went to the local newspapers and submitted some articles, and mm -hmm. uh, we had wonderful coverage in Manatee County, for example, 
in an article writ written by um, uh, Mr. Diamond, uh, was able to generate more than 100 leads. Ah. Now, those leads have uh, met with interviewers, and the interviewers then talk to them about the program to see if this is something that they have the time, the ability, and the temperament to do. Sure. And if they do, then they can sign up for their training. There's a two-day training on site, then there's some online training, then they have a mentor with whom they would go and uh, sit through a court proceeding so the mentor can explain to them the who all the participants are, what the process is. So it's very helpful. There's always support for the new mm -hmm. volunteers, mm -hmm. and we really work hard to make sure we don't lose them, And you know, because it can be overwhelming at times. Mm -hmm. I, I can imagine. <laughs> getting, you know, so a guardian is assigned like <coughs> several children, Tony, or is it a variety? If, do they get a person to do and then that person moves on? You know, I, I, how many you know children can typically a guardian uh, oversee? Well, it, it varies. Um, a, the average is about two cases per uh, volunteer because, mm -hmm. as you know, one case can have one child and one case can have seven children ah. as a sibling group. Um, and they do, uh, it's ideal, as Nancy stated, to have them set up with a mentor who is a seasoned volunteer right. that can just assist them through the process while they're um, starting up. However, they are also assigned to a child advocate manager who is a staff person that will right. oversee that um, volunteer and assist them in their daily activities, um, whatever questions they may have, and just um, always be there for them. So they have um, our child advocacy team um, that we have consists of the volunteer child advocate manager and our child's best interest attorneys. Wow. So that's who um, appears at the court hearings and um, staffings and everything that um, is concerning the case. So depending on how much time a volunteer has um, to offer uh, will depend on how many cases they have because we have some volunteers that may have about three to four cases but they mm -hmm. are able to uh, volunteer that type of time and they enjoy uh, working with the children and enjoy the program. So, I mean, but the, the requirement is still there for, for additional guardian ad litem. Mm -hmm. So, if, if you're a retiree or a small business owner or just an interested individual who feels that, you know, that they could contribute something for the for the sake of these young people, you would encourage them to get in touch with you and probably contact your website, uh, you know, find out additional information. Would that be the correct? Yes, uh, uh, the best way to get in touch with us is to go to our website, 12gal.org. We we'll put that up on the screen. Dot org. Yeah. And when you go to that website, you can not only see a short video, you can also review the job requirement for the guardians, and then sign if you're still interested after you see what else involved, then you can also do a quick little review indicating if you would like to be in DeSoto, Manatee, or Sarasota County. Oh, excellent. So, and then those get sent to me, and then we assign an interviewer who will talk with them and meet with them personally to make sure it's something that they really want to do. Mm -hmm. I did want to touch on something that the judge and Tony mentioned. When I first started doing this this past summer, I think the thing that surprised me most was when I went into the courtroom and I looked around and saw the number of people that were there for individual children. This is the first time when these children, in many cases, have had this many people looking out for their best mm -hmm. interest. You've got the judge, you've got the attorneys and the case managers with Safe Children Coalition or whatever group it is. You've got the parents' attorneys, you know, the mother's attorney, the father's attorney. You've got the attorney for the guardian ad litem office. Mm. Uh, you've got a, a, a CAM, uh, you know, which is the staff member in the guardian ad litem office. You've got the guardians. So you look around and you count the number of people that are involved with these children. It's truly amazing. And one thing that I wanted to point out, too, is that I never thought of it until recently, but when the children are removed from their parents with the case plan that they're given. It might be anger management, it could be domestic violence, it could be parenting classes. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that they have and it actually gives them up to a year to complete these tasks and it gives them kind of a breather from the day-to-day -day supervision and care of their children. Mm -hmm. So it really kind of gives them an opportunity to step back and say, for the sake of my children, 
I need to get myself in the best possible shape mm -hmm. for if and when these children are returned to me. And I see that as a very important part of this as well. And I think that's a critical part. Now, Judge, you see this all, you know, through, throughout the course of your career, you know, hundreds if not thousands and thousands of times. You know, when you have that team, as, as Nancy described before you, I mean, these are very important responsibilities, the, the welfare of, of that specific child. Our goal of the entire process is to heal the family and protect the child. And our, our mission is at the end of that 12 months, if not before, to get those kids back to a healthy family where the parents have got their lives in order and can nurture these children in a healthy way. And I, I, I gotta say that I'm so impressed with the willingness of the guardians to go beyond what they need to do. I've had guardians that have gone on at their own expense over to the East Coast to see a caretaker. <laughs> I've had them going to the doctor's appointments to talk to the physicians. They go to the teachers to find out what's going on in the school. Mm. That information coming back to a judge in, enhances the quality of the decisions that we make. And we're more comfortable with what our decisions are because we have the support and the information coming from an independent right. eyes, and we call them the eyes and ears of the court because that's what they are. And they used to wear a little uh, little angel on their lapel. I don't know, you still do that, Tony, or not? <clears throat> Just the ones that probably still have it. <laughs> okay. yeah, that was a great thing. We, we could identify them and say, you're a guardian at Lionel because you got an angel on your shoulder. But we really do appreciate their work, and we couldn't do what we do as well without having the support and the contributions of the guardians at Lionel. Well, one of the other th key things, Judge, and thank you, is very, very eloquent, and, and and I think you know from uh, from I would think from a legal perspective, having the eyes and ears, as Judge Hayworth so uh, kind of eloquently p put, is just a vital part for the safety and welfare of the child. But as the problem continues to be there, the need for new volunteers is up there. Uh, and to, during that training, uh, obviously you do background checks on individuals and you see if their temperament perhaps is suited to, you know, for, to do this type of work. But how vital a need is it, and Tony and, and Nancy, please jump in, to have uh, additional people uh, volunteer to be a guardian ad litem? Well, we still have the need, and Nancy can um, join in. We have the need uh, for all, all counties, all mm -hmm. three counties. Um, and it's just that um, it, it's nice to be able to have 100% representation, which we are aiming right. for and we do not have currently in the circuit. Um, and that is our statewide goal is to have 100% representation of um, all children in care. And I think, you know, that's pretty much the bottom line is every child um, should have, the, you know, be able to have a volunteer right. um, guardian ad litem that's there in court representing their best interests. Now, recruiting will continue, mm -hmm. and that's ongoing because a lot of times we will have people that they burn out. You know, they've maybe done it for two or three years, and they need a year off, and then they come back after the fact. Um, so we're, it's an ongoing process, and some people might get into it even after their training and find, you know, this really isn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, they might find that it's just too overwhelming when they see mm -hmm. the situation that some of these children have come right. from, and so they will they will resign and say, you know, maybe I can do something else. And but but on the on one hand too, there are people who really take to this, who really mm -hmm. dedicate their, uh, you know, their their that part of their lives to helping right. others. One and of I our would... future guests, I'm sorry, but one of our future guests um, will be a woman named Judy Sharple. She has done this for probably 20 years. Hmm. She did it, I think, for 10 years in Louisiana, and then when she moved to this area, she does it here now as well. And oh, she will be terrific. speaking to that as to why she's done it for so many years. And she is just a representative of so many of the other guardians. You either get it or you don't. It's kind and, of like many professions. I, I think that's mm -hmm. a really important point. Uh, is that you know once you become a guardian ad litem it's something that you know it, it will can stay with you and and you can continue for 20 years and one of the things you mentioned I want to mm -hmm. underline this is that in future programs of guardian ad litem we speak for the children uh, Tony and Nancy will be hosting the program with a variety of other guests as well. You, you can invite Judge Hayworth back for future shows, <laughs> can't you? We might, we might. <laughs> he can come back. He's always, there, he yeah. can be your guest, uh, <laughs> okay. your ongoing guest. Always welcome. Uh, if he can fit us into his busy schedule, we would love to have but, him But back, one of the so. key yeah. things, I think, is to create that media <clears throat> awareness about what the scope of what Guardian Light Lightem continues to do, the need for it, and the importance of it. And I think that's kind of a continuing effort. Now we're 
we're kind of running out of time a little bit, and I want to go around the table. Nancy, we're going to start with you. What's that key thing that you want this community to know about not only the importance of the Guardian Ad Litem program, but also the need for a volunteer? Okay, we probably have a need for about 50 new volunteers now within 50, the circus. 50, 50, 5 zero. 5 zero. Because of some people who are leaving or taking a break mm -hmm. and because of, unfortunately, the increased number of children that are coming into the system. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's very, very crucial that they understand these children need them. And if they have children in their heart, I think it's something that they really need to consider. And once you get started with it, I think it's very difficult to stop. I know um, I've heard volunteers say that they continue to send birthday cards or Christmas or Hanukkah cards or whatever type of celebratory cards That's they great. want. And they stay in touch with many of these children, even after the children have either been reunified or have, um, you know, have stayed in a foster care or been adopted. Well, that's great, Nancy, and, and we're going to put the information up on the screen again. So if people want to find out specifically how to get in touch with the Guardian Ed Lighting Program, I think this would be a wonderful opportunity for, like, snowbirds, too. You know, perhaps, you know, they're here six, eight months out of the year. It would be a wonderful opportunity for them. So if you're a snowbird out there and you're watching METV, get in touch with Nancy. We're creating a new policy for that, so it'll work <laughs> That'll well. That'll be yeah, terrific. we are doing that. At, now, Tony, you know, the mission of the Guardian Ed Lighting Program, as you said, you know, so well, is to have 100% representation. It's an awesome responsibility, you know, to represent those children as they go through this arduous process where their family is at odds and they don't know where they're going or what's happened to them. So it's a, it, it's, it's, it's a very important responsibility as you as the director oversee this. Yes, and, and our mission, you know, is we are for the children. That's why we exist. Um, that's our sole mission is we are for the children. Well, Tony, uh, Nancy, thank you so much. But I want to close with a comment from, from Judge Hayworth. <laughs> Judge Hayworth, Guardian Ad Litem program, you've been involved with it for many, many years. And tell us what you think, you know, people should know, the key thing that people should know about its importance. You don't have to be an expert. Any person that's common sense and cares about children can do this job. And I've got to commend the people of Manatee County. When they got this surge and they ran out of guardians because they didn't anticipate this uh, problem with the heroin and the oxys, people of Manatee County responded amazingly. And they're getting volunteers in. And so I'd encourage folks that have the time and have the passion for the children to contact Nancy Go to the site that's on the web, on the web and, and make an application. We value their service. We don't always agree with them. We can't always agree. But they know that when we're making our decision, it's fully informed. We have all the eyes and ears of the court and all the other people focused on the children. And hopefully we'll have a better result. And I want to put a, uh, uh, a word in, although I can't uh, urge people to raise money for anything, but they do have a guardianship fund, and if people can't spend time as a guardian, I'm sure they would welcome a donation. Is that yes, right? the Children's Guardian Fund is a, a partner of ours and they do raise funds every year. They provide a lot of the opportunities, enrichment opportunities. They might provide a student the opportunity to go to a summer camp or to oh, buy a prom what a great dress idea. or whatever. So that information will be there as well. So the, the Guardian Fund, you know, is that fundraising arm that, you know, mm -hmm. benefits the Guardian Ad Litem. Mm -hmm. And since, you know, children are out there and they need to go to a summer camp or on a field trip or something like that, that money is so available. So they can do normal things as all children. Or even do a, need a yearbook or a prom dress mm -hmm. or, or something like that. What a trip. We're going to put that graphic up on the screen, and it's www.childrensguardianfund.org. Tony, congratulations on being thank the you. director, and I can't thank you enough for, for being here and continued good luck. And we look forward to you and Nancy hosting the next edition of the Guardian Ad Litem, We Speak for the Children. And do you have some ideas on some of the future programs that you're going to do already, Nancy? Yes, we have uh, representatives from the school district, from the Children's Guardian Fund, um, a number of organizations will be involved with, with the program. And Some we from will our announce. community partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All and we're going to be working with you on some public service announcements and and to encourage people to become a guardian ad litem. We certainly appreciate your help. And, and again, uh, special thanks to Judge Lee Hayworth for taking the time out of his busy schedule. Uh, the busiest judge that's in retirement <laughs> now. But uh, Judge Hayworth, it's also a pleasure to see you. Thank you. You're considered one of the most valued voices in this community and you, you're speaking on behalf of the of the guardian ad litem you know talks volumes well thank you METV for shining a light on a well-deserved program one that is so valuable to the judges and particularly to the children thank you thank you everyone and we'll look forward to you hosting the program next time okay thank you and thank you for joining us on this premiere edition of guardian ad litem we speak for the children. Mm -hmm.